Hello and welcome to the online announcers table. Uh, I am SMX, your host with the most, and um, this is my recap of the week in WWE. So we start out with Raw. This was special. This was special. Um, this whole thing with Kane has elevated to a level which is crossing the line into silly. We start out with Kane cutting a promo about hate and blah blah blah, hate this, hate that, you know, it's Kane. And then uh, John Cena come, comes out, uh, interrupts Kane again, and this time, no microphone, nothing. He he just starts getting ready for uh, uh, a fight and Kane gives it to him. So they take the fight way out into the parking lot. The parking lot. Parking lot. Huh. They take the fight into the parking lot. And, uh, Cena uh, is getting beaten. Cena finds a crowbar or a tire iron or something. And hits Kane in the groin with it. Kane throws Cena into a bunch of boxes. And he disappears. No Kane to be found. Um... On the subject of Kane, the whole show seemed to be like Kane was Slenderman. Was the Slenderman. Uh, we had this whole thing with uh, Zack Ryder. We had, uh, because Zack Ryder's now a target of Kane himself. And we every time we got a, a backstage segment with the Zack Ryder... We we see Kane like in the background or or around the corner. He Kane is there, and uh, yeah, uh, it, it just got weird. Or uh, Kane just being this malevolence that still haunts Zack Ryder after being sucked almost sucked into the abyss. So there's that. The continuing story of CM Punk and uh, Dolph Ziggler and John Laurinaitis um, it surprisingly wasn't that played up. Like, it was played up for when it was relevant. It was, uh, you know, it was CM Punk was fighting Jack Swagger this time, and the stipulations was that if Punk won... Uh, Vicky Guerrero and Swagger would, wouldn't be part of the ring and, you know, oh, 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 interfere, interfere, so, um, so that's a lot of stuff, uh, um, Lauren I just, was, uh, didn't interfere at all, in fact, Sim Punk Juan, uh, he actually, he did step in when, uh, CM Punk went out of the ring, and Ziggler was going to step in, and John Lauren and just was like, no, no. Um, I'm not sure what Lauren Itis's game is here. Uh, maybe he'll be, like, face? Maybe he'll turn, like, face? But I don't think so, not this suddenly. But I think there's gonna be some, uh, something happening. Um... My prediction about uh, Chris Jericho, I don't think it'll be happening during the CM Punk match. At least, I don't think so. Because I think Laurinaitis will at least pretend to uh, be a fair referee. I don't... Th um, at this point, I don't know what will happen with uh, Chris Jericho. Uh, speaking of... Um, Chris Jericho went out into the ring in, in, uh, tonight, and he, you know, he was, the arena was filled with Y2J chants, and he was so enamored by it, and he started crying, he was like, he actually started, like, real crying, I'm not sure, well, not real crying, but you know what I mean, and he started crying, and, you know, once again, he dropped the microphone, left the ring without saying anything. This time, it was in kind of a fit of emotion that wasn't <laughs> that wasn't uh, translated well from last week 
um, last week everyone was saying that Jericho was trolling, but net and the announcers were, were like saying last week, oh, he was just overcome with emotion. He didn't think of anything to say. But now we we kind of see that he, if he's trolling, he's at least making this the most elaborate troll ever. I don't know what will happen with him. I don't know. Um, I don't know if uh, he'll interfere with the WWE Championship. I don't know what his game is. Um, I'm still kind of holding on to my theory that he'll become the the new Raw general manager, but I'm not holding on to that theory quite as much anymore. Um, it's all weird. Um, the continuing uh, saga of the awesome truth. The Miz is now paranoid. He goes to John Laurinaitis and he's like, "No, you. He's going to." He's going to beat me up, and Lauren I says, well, I'd love to help, but you it's kind of your fault. Um, <laughs> so, the Miz spends, like, the entire episode looking for a bodyguard, or a patsy, or somebody to get the one up on our truth And, unlike last Monday, where our truth was, like, <laughs> mugging to the audience, I'm here! I'm going to do something wacky! Um... Our truth was nowhere to be seen at all backstage, and uh, finally, finally, the Miz enlists the help of Ricardo Rodriguez. You gotta feel sorry for the guy. He's like, <laughs> uh, the Miz enlists Ricardo's help in calling out our uh, truth, and Ricardo's like, our truth. You you better come out now because you're 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 smelly and and you know he's like doing all this cowardly stuff and he can't smack talk for anything and it was it was gloriously bad. Um, then Truth comes in. Truth comes in and he's like, hey, "Okay, what's up?" <laughs> Uh, hey, sing for me. You know, it, it's all very wacky. It's all very wacky. It was, it was like, I was kind of like glued to my screen in what was an awe. I don't know. I, it, it was very like played for laughs. And then the Miz comes and beats our truth up uh, and runs away. And our truth is like, eh, little Jimmy. Um, Um, the only real match here was the match between, was the match, uh, between the tag team of uh, Santino and Sheamus versus Jinder Mahal and Wade Barrett. That was the only match there, and, uh, the team of Sheamus and Santino won. Santino got the pin. Um, I'm, I'm actually glad that they're kind of pushing Santino. Um... And I, I really, am, yeah, I'm glad that uh, the little weirdo is getting kind of his, uh, kind of getting out of his little jobber status. Um, so back to the Kane storyline because the Kane storyline is going all through Raw. You have to understand this, and um, so we get started with the Divas match. Uh. You know, Eve makes her entrance, and uh, Kane in in kind of replaces Beth Phoenix, but he's nowhere to be seen. And you know, everyone's scared. What will Kane do to Eve? Zack Ryder comes in, and he is, and he's like playing knight in shining armor. Come on, come with me if you want to live. And uh, they get to Zack's car, and. Zack Ryder, I don't know. He's like, he's like, all the time. One of the tires been slapped, so he, he he quickly breaks out the the spare tire and tries to change it. Um, and then we then go to the match between John Cena and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, <laughs> it, it starts to be a good match. And uh, John Cena does the you can't see me move. And then he sees 
Zack Ryder's predicament on the screen. What is with these cameramen? The <laughs> Zack Ryder's trying to escape from Raw, and these cameramen and these cameramen are showing it on the Titan Tron. <laughs> I don't know if that's breaking the fourth wall or what, but I don't know. So John Cena sees Zack Ryder's pre- uh, predicament on the Titan Tron, and he goes to help him. Um, so John Cena goes to help him, but uh, Kane Kane gets to, Z- to Ryder before uh, Cena does, and Kane choke slams Ryder on into the truck bay, like onto one of the wind. Uh, planks where the loading dock is, and then Cena comes in, beats you know, tries to fight Kane, and we see Ryder like dazed on the thing. Um, uh, Kane uh, does his uh, um, his chloroform thing. I think I think. If this isn't a joke, I'm gonna make it. I think Kane's glove is coated in chloroform because Kane really likes just to suffocate Cena and then walk away. And that's kind of the image we're left with for this week. Um, Kane, um, you know, standing menacingly over John Cena. Okay, so. Big story arcs aside, we have we had actually we had a plot thread for Friday SmackDown, a rematch between Daniel Bryan and The Big Show. The stipulation is, is here is no disqualification and no countout. So now Daniel Bryan has to win against The Big Show to retain his top title, um, and I am predicting Brian will lose, and, you know, it'll kind of force his, it'll kind of force the, this heel turn he's done recently, um, and if Brian wins, it'll still help with this heel turn, um, so, it seems like the big show is like the only person Daniel Bryan seems to fear. Um, so there's that. And then we're introduced to Brodus Clay. That was the weirdest few minutes of my life. Okay, so we're introduced to Brodus Clay. I'm not sure where he came from or what foreshadowing he had. Apparently it was just that he was supposed to pr- premiere tonight. I don't know. Uh, and I, his gimmick is that he, he's a disco funk master. He is grooving to the beat. He has two, two dancers flanking him. And he, he dances onto the ring. And it, it, it was Disco Kid. You know, in Punch Out Wii, we had Disco Kid. That was weird. And he won his match. Um, that was weird. So this was a special show. I don't know what to think of it, because it was like, huh, that happened. <laughs> That's my only reaction, is that happened. Um, here's hoping to SmackDown, here's hoping SmackDown isn't that weird. Because my god, my god, this was a weird, weird Raw. It was weird. Um, I'm going to take a break after that break. Um, I'm going to share some news stories with you, and then after that, I'll get to the SmackDown recap. See ya. And we're back, um... Hello, everybody. Hey, welcome to the new news segment of uh, this online announcer's table. This is where I just go to WrestleZone and uh, give my thoughts on a couple of their pieces. Um, of course, as I said in, uh, a few seconds ago, all the news is provided by um, WrestleZone.com. 
for all your wrestling needs, not just WWE, uh, TNA, Ring of Honor, or USC, whatever you want, they got it. Anyway, first story, the WWE is dropping some peep, uh, pay-per-views, and uh, former WWE star is training for MMA. Um, okay, as for WWE dropping some pay-per-views, WWE is going to get rid of the Vengeance pay-per-view, and this will give them one more pay-per-view in October, allowing them to some more time to build to Hell in the Cell and Survivor Series. Um, I... I have no uh, objections to this. Um, I, I'm very new to the this wrestling, the wrestling scene. So you know, I don't have like an emotional uh, attachment to any like big pay per view events, uh, except for Money in the Bank because um, I, I watched some of Spoonie's vlogs. Um, so. Uh, and Vengeance seemed kind of pointless to me. Uh, Survivor Series is a ha- you know, everyone ha- every other pay-per-view had its big moment. And it's WrestleMania is like the end-all, be-all, um, uh, event to start off the WWE year. Um, you know, Royal Rumble is a big elimination match. Elimination Chamber is the Elimination Chamber match. You know, all of these pay-per-views uh, <clears throat> uh, led up to a big, uh, big match, big special match, and you know, I didn't really get Vengeance. Maybe there was a ven- Vengeance match, but I don't know. That that's just me. So. <clears throat> Uh, that, that's it for now, um, uh, uh, next news story, uh, uh, Jim Ross speaks on Brodus Clay, uh, in response to several fan tweets con- concerning, uh, Brodus Clay's WWE Raw, uh, debut, Jim Ross posted the following, I'm a Brodus Clay fan, and been around long enough not to judge anything on his first appearance, he's going to He's going to apparently be a fan fave. Relax. Okay, on Brodus Clay. And you, you kind of saw me be weirded out by a WWE Raw. Uh, I, I pretty much just, you know, record these right after the show. So that, you know, the matches stay fresh in my mind. The Brodus Clay matches, and this will be on uh, the SmackDown section I, when I do what uh, I'll do right after this. Um, Brodus Clay always gets the same reaction out of me, no matter what, and it's well that happened. It it, it goes beyond just well that's weird. It 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 literally is. Well, that happened. I don't have an opinion. And that's how weirded out I am. I mean, I don't even... And you can see it because... Um, I'm not even sure... Or it, I think Brodus Clay is actually assigned to the SmackDown brand because he had a ma- he had a squash match on SmackDown. It, I don't know. It always garners that same reaction. Well, that happened. Uh, so that's that. Close to amp. Uh, The Rock's WWE schedule oh, and uh, backstage heat on Evan Bourne. The Rock's WWE schedule. The Rock hasn't wrestled since Survivor Series. Um, and hasn't appeared since Survivor Series. But that's going to change. Uh, he's going to appear on WWE in, in programming for for about every week, beginning at the end of February, to build to his, uh, build to the big match with John Cena. Um, I'd say, I'd say he start building up him up since the beginning of February, because, you know, 
Um, we really need that build-up, and it seems that the first half of 2011 was all build-up to something that wouldn't happen until the, this later year, so, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of waiting for what The Rock, for what The Rock is cooking. Um, but more importantly, back's the inch heat on Evan Airborne. Uh, there's heat on Evan Bourne after Triple H confronted him weeks ago, blaming, blaming him for the story getting out about r truths suspension being for fake marijuana, and how they were smoking it together, according to the Wrestling Observer newsletter. <clears throat> it's said that Triple H is not a fan of Bourne, but Stephanie McMahon th- <clears throat> thinks he brings something unique to the table that makes him work is keeping him building. Despite the support of Stephanie, there are still whispers within the WWE that and Bourne is about to be in, in the next Paul London, which translates into a guy with talent who's going to be broken mentally by the system. There's also heat on Bourne because the idea that you're not supposed to publicly show f- frustration with the company and feel, and some feel that he has done that through Twitter at, at times. Um... Well, that that kind of sucks. I uh, I watch superstars actually uh, on WWE dot com. Uh, for you know, for those of you who you know don't who live in the states, you know that you don't see superstars on uh, t- TV anymore. But I watch it on Hulu and I watch it on WWE dot com. So I've been watching superstars, and he's pretty good. So yeah, um. I, it kind of sucks that all this backstage stuff is happening, so, that's all for the news, is, uh, that's all for the news, uh, uh, this week, I'll, uh, check back with you, uh, later with the, the SmackDown recap, see ya! And, now time for the SmackDown recap. Of course, this is the big build-up to the no disqualifications, no count-out heavyweight a championship match. But of course, before all that, we have had several matches. Um, we have this three-way in rivalry between Jinder Mahal, Sheamus, and Wade Barrett. Um, we have an, a match between uh, Sheamus and, and Jinder Mahal. Oh, and then Wade Barrett coming in to make his classic Bond villain speech. Um, we saw Brodus Clay again, and like I said earlier, just it, it's what if if you uh, listen or watch Lord Cat's live stream, and you know what what is. Ugh. Anyway, it, it's good thing SmackDown focuses more on the wrestling aspect of the WWE because after this week's Raw, it was it was kind of a refreshing uh, thing to you know see some actual wrestling going on and not Slender Kane. Um, we have more with Drew McIntyre and his. Uh, <laughs> closer to cl- closer and closer, being closer and closer to being fired. Um, we we uh, I th- actually Drew McIntyre's match was being co- uh, guest commentated by Hunico and Camacho. Uh, both of them are getting pushed right now. Uh, nothing yet to speak of, so we have that. Um, uh, San- Santina. Oh, Morel uh, and um, David Otunga match, and of course Santino lost, and that's pretty much all the matches. Nothing story is like nothing big story wise happened. It, you know everything's been put on cruise control. The big thing was the World Heavyweight Championship storyline. I have to wonder. I have to wonder, er, this big champ, heavyweight championship storyline, we have, 
you know, the quick lightning speed Daniel Bryan against, two, basically against two big giants. And he has his match uh, scheduled for the big show. And then Mark Henry uh, is going to get his, is, was set to get his match next week. So we have all this build up. Uh, Daniel Bryan and AJ kind of go up a step in their relationship. Uh, AJ, he, uh, you know, prof- professes her love. Uh, and Daniel Bryan's like, okay, how much, how much do you love me? You know, <laughs> one of the reasons why I like this kind of heel tweener Bryan that they're, <laughs> um, they're slowly pushing him to be is just that it's, he's not like, a he's not like, a card-carrying villain. He's just like, I'm awesome. You know, he's just cocky. Um, you know, oh, it, it's just great. It's, I, I, I love, like, funny uh, villains like that. Um, so, you know, that, that happened. Um, uh, AJ goes to the big show and she's like, I, I know this whole match, and this is a competition, and it means a lot to the both of you, but don't, don't hurt Daniel all that much, and all Big Show says, well, I'll see what I can do. And then Brian bursts in and is like, hey, 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 first you want to take my title, and now you want to take my girl. Oh, oh, oh it's on. It's on. And <laughs> Big Show was like, ugh. You, you know, uh, he he's beyond angry right now. He's beyond, like, getting angry. It's more just annoyance. He wants to shut this twerp up. I love it. <laughs> and, um... So we have the match. Uh, Bryant, hold, Bryant holds his own, but he actually has to get a chair to help him with uh, Big Show. And it's actually a pretty good match. A pretty more pretty good uh, tug of war match between Big Show and Daniel Bryan and both of them are kind of pushing each other uh Big Show it, the match technically ends when Big Show tries to chase Daniel Bryan out of the ring and runs into AJ and AJ and you know AJ's pretty hurt because he he's nearly 500 pounds so, oh, um, oh, it, that was like one one of my biggest holy crap moments ever since I got in, into wrestling, which was like a few months ago, like back back in survive back with Survivor Series is um it was like in la- last year, like in September or something. Not even September. I I know, like I officially like liked wrestling. In, in Survivor Series, but that was like the only moment when I went. Oh man, they did that, and you know, oh the the medic is stabilizing her, and it looks bad. And the crowd, I love this crowd. <laughs> the crowd starts chanting, "She's okay, she's okay, she's okay." <laughs> I really love this crowd. Um. So they cart off of AJ. Big, the, both uh, the Big Show looks destroyed by this. He's utterly destroyed. Like, oh my God, why, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> and Daniel Bryan's like, oh, oh, now you will pay. And, um, you know, they, they cart her off. Daniel Bryan calls out the Big Show, and he's like, You can have that belt. If if you want it so bad, how could you be so reckless? And he's, like, tearing into the Big Show. And the, and the show actually ends with show just looking utterly destroyed. Like, like he's... Just um, 
destroy like his friendship with Daniel Bryan and AJ. So that was SmackDown for this week. I I don't know what this. <laughs> um, the only like storyline I care about at this point is the heavyweight world championship. And it's pretty much... And I don't know um, what this means for Mark Henry next week, who uh, who uh, was banking on ha- having a winner to have his match with. So, I don't know. Maybe Daniel Bryan just forfeited his uh, championship belt and, you know, went on to and is going to go on to feud with the big show over this but i don't know anyway that's smackdown for this week um yeah so until next week i've been smx and you've been you and this has been the online announcers table now if you'll excuse me well i have stuff to do <laughs>